All right there, everyone. The United Nations Migration Pact is absolutely collapsing. That's what we'll be talking about on today's video. Just so you know, I will be posting my final update on the midterm elections later on today in the early afternoon. And I'm also planning on posting a number of quick update videos throughout election night on Tuesday night to monitor and analyze the returns as they're coming in. So make sure you tune in for those. But before that, I wanted to go over with you the whole UN migration calamity, uh, because I think it's just so instructive in terms of where Europe is right now in the current state of things. Now, if you're not familiar with it, back in June, the United Nations passed what they're calling the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration, which they see as necessary to protect both immigrants and the countries taking in the immigrants in an age of simply unprecedented and unparalleled immigration rates. The stated aim of the pact is to make migration safer and addresses issues such as how to protect migrants and how to integrate them into new countries, and also the protocols returning them back to their homelands. And the text of the agreement was finalized by UN member states back in July, and it's been scheduled to be adopted and implemented at a UN conference in Morocco in December. However, a number of nations have begun to just raise some real red flags regarding the global compact, and there seem to be two major issues of concern. First and foremost, the compact is operating along the very multinational lines exemplative of globalist structures, protocols, and arrangements. So in other words, the compact seems to superimpose more or less a one-size-fits-all immigration protocol on all nations with just smacks of globalism and therefore is highly suspect among nations who whose populations are really currently rebelling against globalization, such as Hungary and Poland, Austria, here in the States. But secondly, there's a concern that the Global Compact mixes up the rights of asylum seekers with those of economic migrants, which is a huge problem for many nations. There are nations such as, for example, Hungary, who are more than willing to offer asylum to, say, persecuted Christians in the Middle East, but they have no intention of letting in people uh, from that same region who are simply just looking for jobs. That's the same here in the United States with President Trump. And so, needless to say, there's significant suspicion currently being directed towards this UN Compact on Immigration. But then something happened that seemed to seal the suspicion for many European nations. And that, of course... <laughs> was the endorsement and indeed the deliberate defense of the compact by none other than German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who really just should have kept her mouth shut about all this. Let's be blunt. Instead, Merkel and her Christian Democratic Union have published a list of questions and answers that seek to refute the objections made by those nations refusing to sign the compact, as well as reassure what they call concerned citizens that this compact really is in their best interest. And, you know, that just seems like that's all a number of national leaders needed to hear because now it appears that the entire compact is collapsing. More and more nations are coming out and saying, you know what, we don't want to have anything to do with something that Merkel is promoting. As of now, the United States, Austria, Hungary, the Czech Republic, and most recently, Poland and Croatia have all announced they will not be signing this global pact. Now, ironically, it's Austria that's delivering some of the strongest rhetoric in denouncing the compact in the name of defending their national sovereignty. And Austria is claiming that they know what's really going on here, what's really behind the UN's push to pass this compact. When all is said and done, Austria is challenging the whole notion of what both the UN and the EU are up to. They recognize that both the EU and the, EU and the UN, they want to make immigration a basic human right that is then enforced by the courts. That's what's really behind this measure. And again, the fact that both the UN and the EU have been so ridiculously unreasonable with their insistence on open borders, particularly for European nations, but indeed for virtually all Western nations, uh, makes just such a suspicion automatically plausible. Now, keep in mind that Austria is currently the holder of the EU's rotating presidency. So this rhetoric, needless to say, is absolutely sending shockwaves throughout Brussels because Austria isn't holding back. Remember, 
Immigration was the one issue that brought both the center-right People's Party and the nationalist right, the so-called far-right Freedom Party, together to form a 60% right-wing coalition in Austria. Immigration is uniting the right in Austria very much like the Supreme Court and judges are uniting the right in the United States. And so it's quite predictable that this compact was going to get considerable opposition, and as it turns out, even from the presidency of the EU. So this is becoming somewhat of a crisis for both the EU and the UN and is a further indicator of the kind of European leadership that we can expect to see emerge in the course of the next year. We talked about this in an earlier video on the EPP or the European People's Party, which is the largest transnational political party in the European Union. We reported that they are in fact turning to the nationalist populist right in terms of their leadership, in terms of their choice for the president of the European Commission. And we noted there that this choice was an indicator of what the EPP leadership saw as the emerging makeup of the European Union. This move to the political right was a telegraphing of what they see as this mass turn to the nationalist populist right that they're expecting in the upcoming elections in May in 2019 for the European Parliament. In a similar manner, this rather significant exodus of nations that want nothing to do with the UN Immigration Compact is just another indicator of the changing political order that marks our world today. Keep in mind, all of this is happening while Angela Merkel is basically collapsing as a political force in Europe, and at the same time Emmanuel Macron in France is falling behind Marine Le Pen in their latest round of polling. So there's little question here that the whole concern over border security and cultural security is fast becoming the overwhelmingly dominant political issue of our age in Europe, with absolutely no signs whatsoever of letting up as much as our globalist elite, particularly in the corporatist media, hope for such a reprieve. It's just not going to be happening anytime soon. And this is largely because of the contradiction that's inherent in globalization. Few liberal globalists recognize this contradiction, but the collapse of the center left should at least get them to take a moment's notice. Globalization proponents like to sell globalism by claiming that it offers individuals more sovereign control over their own life circumstances than at any other time in history. We're more in control over our own lives than we've ever been, and we can choose our careers, our spouses, where we want to live, our religion. Heck, we can choose our sexuality and our gender. There's never been a time when we've had more sovereignty over our own life circumstances today, and you can thank globalism. And yet, more and more populations are recognizing that we certainly have these choices, but within a globalist system over which we have no choice. More and more people are realizing that we exercise control over our own lives while simultaneously living in a technocratic world over which we have no control. We may have lots of choices locally, but we're feeling more and more helpless globally. And nothing, absolutely nothing, emblemizes or symbolizes the sense of global helplessness than unwanted immigration. Poll after poll of European populations reveals that the vast majority of Europeans, no matter what nation you're polling, the vast majority believe that immigration has changed their nation for the worse, and they want nothing to do with it. And yet their center left, and to a certain extent, their center right leaders just won't listen. They keep the borders open and the migrants flooding in. So we're finding that it's not so much that globalism enables us to control our own lives. Rather, we're finding that our lives are being more and more controlled by globalism. And so we're seeing a massive backlash where the nationalist populist right is seen as the only political defense against an increasingly out-of-control globalization that more and more populations want absolutely nothing to do with. So all this is to say is that regardless of what ultimately happens to the UN Immigration Compact, if its ultimate goal was to make immigration a human right protected by the UN, the EU, and other globalist institutions, you can rest assured the growing list of nations backing out of signing the agreement all but guarantees that such a goal will disappear along with an ever-dwindling and fading 
globalist future. Make sure to click on our link below and get your copy of my book, President Trump and Our Post-Secular Future, for only 99 cents for a limited time. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Click on that Patreon link below, become a monthly supporter of this channel, and help us to continue to analyze current events in light of conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish. God bless.